CAO Flathead 660. Hey everybody, I'm Luke and this is Cigar Vlog. So check this out. CAO has been kind of making a new bit of a rebranding name in the past years, uh, being a little bit more pop culture oriented. From their Moon Trance, which I've had before, and is kind of a Drew Estate ripoff, which they ended up hooked up with uh, Motley Crue, making a specially branded version of that, all the way up to this uh, new Flathead line. Well, new ish, it's been out for a couple of years. But the Flathead line here is based on kind of the hot rod culture. As you can see, it's a flat head. Well, it's supposed to be flat. Anywho, this is a nice 60 gauge Gordo. I'm hoping that I can actually get this cut, because normally I just punch these. Come on, be nice to me. Alright. This is going to take a little strategy here. The cap on this is gigantic because of the fact that it's this big, huge, square as hell head. And my cutter is not quite big enough to handle this all in one go. Ooh, shit. Okay. I think I better quit while I'm ahead. All right. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy lit up. And hopefully this will not end up unraveling on me because I spaced out and brought my double guillotine cutter instead of my punch cutter, which is a far more viable solution for a seriously huge, seriously awkward cigar shape. As you can tell, the fact that it's all squared off, it's box pressed. Box press just basically means it's flat, so it doesn't roll off the table when you sit it down. <laughs> yeah, tasty. Fortunately, there's enough of a huge as hell, I think triple cap on there, that I don't think I'm going to have a problem. Clean tobacco, touch of coffee, I think. Well, not really a whole lot to write home about, just right from the foot. Hmm, yeah. Clean tobacco, a little sweet. A bit of coffee. Right, that's not bad. So basically that was just my screw of light. There's a little spiciness to it. Okay, so decent enough start, I suppose. I'm gonna go ahead and smoke this down with I'm gonna go ahead and yank the band as well because it's super loose and this is gonna be annoying as hell. So I'm just gonna go ahead and yank that right from the get-go. I'm gonna make sure my light's good and stable and give you an update once the uh, flavor kind of picks up and actually gets a little bit of development. All right, so about an inch in, the flavors have definitely taken a firm hold. I'm getting a very kind of pecan spiciness, a deep, dark cocoa and coffee note. And so far, it's kind of striking me like drinking bourbon while eating fine chocolate. It's kind of got that vibe to it. It's got that little bit of bite to it from the uh, little pepperiness on there. But the flavors themselves are deep, deep espresso and a good, dark chocolate. Very good. My only gripe so far is the fact that it's square. And this is the thing about box press cigars that's kind of a little bit of a pet peeve. <laughs> you smoke them, and they round out anyway. The whole box press flat thing is basically just marketing. <laughs> it doesn't really impact the actual smokability of the cigar. It does, however, screw up how you cut it. Case in point, the previous section. <laughs> Overall though, it's just a minor annoyance that uh, shouldn't get in the way of this. Flavor is just, this is a good, this is a good one. Also, because this is a Gordo, you, get, you are gonna have to kind of double puff through about the first half of it, just because of the fact that it's so huge, that if you don't, you don't end up burning the wrapper. If you don't burn the wrapper, you don't get the flavor. Filler is just that filler. That's kind of one of the downsides of Gordos, is there's a lot of filler. But other than that, they know how to blend. 
There's always something kind of weird about CAO. They always kind of strike me as kind of the Starbucks of the cigar world, you know? They make a good product, but at the same time, there's always a kind of, what the hell, going on in the background? Needless to say, I haven't been to Starbucks in a while. But, uh, it's because they are. You have to be kind of careful with some of their lines. Like the CAO Moon Trance, which is their infused line. Well, for starters, this ended up getting a branding with Motley Crue, which was kind of weird. It was basically the same Moon Trance, but just with a Motley Crue band. But the infusion that they use, I don't know what they do to it. It's got a very artificial flavor to it. As opposed to like the Drew Estate, say, Kuba Kuba, which is another infused cigar that kind of started the whole infusion thing. That has a very, I want to say, magical flavor. <laughs> CAO kind of tried to copy that, and they got close, but there's just, there's just something a little, huh? What that? A little off about it. Yeah, maybe that's just me. Well, anyway, I'm going to smoke this down to half halfway point. See if anything wakes up, changes, or just matures. Alright. See you at the halfway. Good lord. See you at the halfway. All right, pretty decent halfway point here. The ash just fell off. I can tell you right now, construction on this is top tier, especially after eating half the cap. <laughs> Flavors. At one point I got, I just could have swore I had a little bit of a marshmallow creaminess to it. But otherwise, they basically just kind of intensify and mature. You get a real good coffee cocoa note. Retro Hill has a little bit of the spice, but a large cocoa hit. After the first inch, the spiciness kind of died down completely to the point where you maybe notice it kind of on the tail end. I can liken this to maybe the having a big old Starbucks chocolate flavored coffee, but like spiked with bourbon. And I don't know about you, but that sounds actually kind of good. <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that it's a Starbucks. Anyway, uh, overall flavor profile is dark co dark coffee. Dark cocoa and just a hint of spice. Overall, an excellent cigar so far. I will take note that the draw on this one is a little stiff. I'm gonna pretty much chalk this up to the fact that it's a handmade product. The thing about premium cigars is they're all handmade, so sometimes they roll them a little tighter than others. I've had these before and the draw is not usually quite this stiff. Anyway, flavors have been good getting progressively stronger and just kind of building. Consistent is a thing, yeah. There's people that definitely uh, go for consistency. And I can definitely call this a consistent cigar. I'd say if you're one of those guys that likes uh, flavor changes halfway through, mm, this might be a little boring to you. Especially because it's a big, huge Gordo. So it's gonna take you a while to burn through this. But if that's not a problem, this will be right up your alley. Well, I'm going to smoke this down to the nub and get a final update from there. Hopefully, that nice consistency will end up playing all the way through the end. Alright. Getting up on the nub here. Flavors are starting to get hot and washed out. So I figured this is a good point to end this. Flavors have been pretty consistent all the way through. Nice, deep, dark coffee. Dark cocoa. Stupidly loud motorcycle. Anyway. I can definitely recommend a good bourbon, like a sweet bourbon, good dark coffee espresso, something like that. Other than that, you got a nice deep coffee, nice deep cocoa, a touch of spice, an excellent uh, just kind of sit back and chill cigar. Other than that, 660 is the only line I think that it is in the flathead line that actually has that flavor profile. Don't quote me on that because I haven't had other members of the line and they come in different sizes, so I don't know if they all have the same flavor profile or not. So far for this one though, flavors are good, flavors are consistent, and it is huge. My only real gripe about this is the fact that it's square and huge. So cutting it, I can definitely say you're gonna to wanna to use a punch cut, V cut, something like that. Something other than just like your standard double guillotine, just because of the fact that it will get messed up on you. Other than that, not really much else to say. It's a good cigar, definitely worth the money. If you get a chance to check them out, by all means, do so. You won't be disappointed. All right, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. So, if you like this review or any other review, or any other video I made of other stuff, 
like, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know if you've had a different experience. Also, be sure to check out my Twitch stream, Sundays and Wednesday night, midnight to 2am. Those will be recorded for up to about a week afterwards, in case you haven't missed the actual live show. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Good cigar on a kind of questionable day. Anywho, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.